In this video we're going to discuss another very important concept in quantum mechanics or a principle and that is orthogonality. So generally orthogonality if you think of it in the geometric sense like Cartesian dimensions x, y, and z are orthogonal or you can think about things being orthogonal to each other in a Cartesian sense when they are perpendicular to each other. So the dimensions are sort of independent of one another. Uh, similarly for functions we can have uh, orthogonality for functions. So a function is said to be orthogonal, two functions are said to be orthogonal to each other, if we have something like the following property. Uh, some psi m, say some nth wave function for a system, and psi n, some nth wave function for a system, if that total integral equals zero. And this is sort of analogous to the dot product of two vectors being zero. When the dot product of two vectors is zero, they're perpendicular to each other. When the, to when the whole space integral of two functions multiplied but times each other equals zero, those two functions are, are orthogonal. Okay, so uh, going, going forward with the Dirac notation that we introduced last time, let's just remind ourselves that something like uh, this ket n equals just psi n of x. If we alternatively have it in a bra, they come together and form a bracket. The bracket notation, this is equal to the complex conjugate of the mth wave function. Similarly, if we have them t together, the bracket it forms is the whole space integral of the product of those two functions. And if we have an operator sandwiched in the middle between two vertical bars, m, a, n, like that, then we have integral minus infinity to infinity dx psi m star of x a psi n of x. Okay, so that's just a reminder of last time for the notation we're going to be using in this video. Okay, so let's say we have some m and n, which are eigenfunctions of some operator a that we have. Okay, and this a is also going to be a Hermitian, Hermitian operator as we discussed a couple videos ago. So that's going to have an important relationship that's going to come up. So two relations that we're going to follow are that A acting on N gives us the eigenvalue AN times the eigenfunction N back. And similarly, A acting on the eigenfunction M gives us the, eigen, the nth eigenvalue back times the function. Okay, so looking at uh, specific integrals here, if we have the integral man, which would be defined as we defined it up here, then that is equal to, well, m, a acting on n just returns a n, the nth eigenvalue. Then once that eigenvalue is inside an integral, we can just pull it out. And we just have the integral mn, which is equivalent to this integral we have up here. The overlap of those two, it would be zero if they are orthogonal. And then we can also look at another case where we have n a m, this integral, and we're going to take the complex conjugate of this whole integral. This might seem confusing right now, but we're going somewhere with this, so just stick with us. Well, following the same logic, we would get n, and then this m returns the mth eigenfunction times m, all of that complex conjugate. And then I can pull out that mth eigenvalue, complex conjugate of it, because it was complex conjugated inside this parentheses here, times, sorry, nm. N M star. And then looking at this long enough, 
we should be able to convince ourselves that mn is just equal to mn uh, to nm star. So this is equal to reverse the order of the indices and then take a star. Just You're just switch changing which function has the complex conjugate on it. So in this we're going to get am star m n crossing over the line there. Oh well. Okay, so this is important because according to the definition of Hermitian operators, which we looked at a little while ago, the integral m a n is equal to the integral n a m star. That's a general property of Hermitian operators and we derived that a couple videos ago. So because of this, we see that these two lines up here that we just uh, derived are equal. So these two expressions that we have at the end of these lines uh, can be set equal to each other. So we have a n m n equals a m star m n. Okay, so that's neat. Uh, let's use this for some specific cases then. Oh, before we do that, uh, let's simplify this to where we have a n minus a m star product there. Let's separate those two sides there. Times the integral m n equals zero. Okay, so we have this relationship up here on the top right. So if m equals, not the color I was looking for there, okay, yellow. If m equals n, then we have a n minus a n star, because m equals to n, the integral n n equals zero. Now if we have n n, then this is psi n star psi n, and that integral is equivalent to the normalization condition. So if we have a normalized wave function, then this term is just equal to 1 and disappears. So what we're left with is a n minus a n star equals 0, or equivalently a n equals a n star. So this is another proof that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator have to be real. So for any value of n, the eigenvalue a n has to be real. So we have eigenvalues are real. Which is good because physical properties, which are the eigenvalues of Hermitian operators, physical observables, those are real numbers. Things like energy and position, momentum, those are all real numbers, so these eigenvalues should be real. And then looking at the case where m does not equal to n, we can we know that a n equals a n star, so a m equals a m star, so we're just going to go ahead and replace a m star with a m. m n equals zero. So we know uh, by inspection here that we said m does not equal n so we're assuming that the eigenvalues are different so these are not equal to zero so the only way for this total product to equal to zero then is if this integral mn the overlap integral if that equals zero so since this integral equals zero as we defined as the orthogonality condition over here we can say then that in fact eigenfunction m and eigenfunction n are orthogonal. Okay, so that means, and this is just a general m, general n, so it's any value, any solution to the Schrodinger equation for a given system. So for particle in a box we had that value of n, and n could equal anything between 1 and infinity, so these are true for any given value of m and n in general. So we have that the eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator, and all 
quantum mechanical operators that we talk about are Hermitian, that the eigenfunctions are orthogonal. And we haven't seen a lot of use for why this is important yet, but as I promised for this other condition, these are uh, very, these will be very important moving forward, and we're going to use it a lot in derivations and simplifying problems. And it's going to help us to gain some more insight when we start studying more difficult problems that require more advanced methods.